Well, good morning. You're on with Big J. You know what time it is. Let's talk. I'll be right back. Roll that intro. Approaches. Usain Bolt, with all his comedy antics prior to his event when he's on the start line, we've all seen this. Okay? Um, Michael Phelps, however, much different approach. He sits down, he has, he's listening to music, he has a much more cerebral, contemplative approach towards his event. But it's both very effective. Sports psychology may play a part in their preparation for their events and maybe a reason why they're successful. What happens when things go wrong? Here's another example. In the 2012 Olympics in London, in the soccer final, there were two finalists, Brazil and Mexican football. It was incredible. The reason I'm playing this video is because I want to know what make, makes LaMelo Ball different from other 19-year-olds. So I, I went back and I looked at sports medicine, I looked at um, psychology from the, uh, from the mind perspective and sports. And then when I listened to um, Devontae Graham's um, interview last night, I was kind of uh, uh, confused because he said some things which most professional athletes don't say. He say, oh, they were good. They, they were good. When, he, when a team has three or four of, of their major players out and, you, and you're wooed by that and say, oh, they're good, they're just better than us. That's a concern because that, that, that mindset comes from somewhere and that same mindset will affect other players. So I want to see why LaMelo Ball is the way he is at 19. So I'm sharing this video with you. We'll be right back. It'll be impressive to watch. And if you watch the Brazil players, their heads dropped. They seemed slightly defeated. They couldn't understand why they weren't performing as well as they, they were. Perhaps they were complacent. Perhaps they had... Uh, expected too much. Perhaps they were overconfident. The Mexicans had nothing to lose. They attacked with fervor and they, they won the Olympic title. They were the Olympic champions over the fancied favorites. Perhaps sports psychology can explain why uh, fancied champions may be overconfident and may fail when, when they're expected to win. And perhaps why underdogs take on the best and win despite so all So elite athletes, Coaches and the people who surround athletes know very well the importance of sports psychology and they're beginning to embrace it. Sports psychologists are often included in the teams that surround athletes nowadays. What is sports psychology? Well, it's... He's going to say something that makes you think. As a Charlotte Hornets fan and as a fan of LaMelo Ball, he's going to say something. He's going to say that the mind is important and those who feed the mind are critical. For example, Coach James Borrego, he is to feed the mind of the athletes, not to tear it down. And if you go back and you remember some things that Melo Ball were going through that we all noticed, his coach was actually trying to tear his mind down. But because of his elitist status as an athlete and who trained him in these areas, he was ready for the state that was given him and what did he do he produced on it in a negative environment you got to listen to this video the the science of and, and study and practice of mental preparation for sport it involves identifying the techniques and strategies that athletes can take and use so that they perform at their most optimum it also helps athletes deal with comeback with setbacks and help them to come back from devastating defeats defeats such as those by James Magnuson or Roy McElroy. So we'll just begin to unpack some of these strategies that sports psychologists talk about. So looking inside the mind of a winner, what factors are linked to success in sport? Well, clearly an athlete has to be motivated. Often goals that, mo that athletes set describe or um, will demonstrate how, m how much effort and how much will they have to win in their event. But sometimes motivation isn't, just en isn't enough. An athlete has to be confident. And confidence seems to be ubiquitous amongst high-performing performers. There are a number of strategies that athletes can use to boost their confidence. Another important factor is knowledge 
of the sport. So basically knowing your sport inside out, but also knowing the opposition. What are their strengths and their weaknesses? So it is important that an athlete is confident. And there are a number of... See, and, and, and this is so critical. I remember when they drafted LaMelo Ball and James Borrego's interview. He said, the kid calls me a lot. Uh, 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 oh, yeah, but I appreciate that. No, the reason he was calling you because he is an elitist. And what elitist does, he needs to know what he's coming into. What will the battle look like? Who will we face? What is our play? What is our strategy? So what he was doing, he was getting the upper hand so he could learn the nuances of what he needed to know coming in. So he could dominate. <laughs> let me let you finish the video. Ways you can boost an athlete's self-confidence. Experience, reminding an athlete of their experience is extremely important. Modeling, and I don't mean catwalk modeling here, modeling is also an important aspect because that enables an athlete uh, to have a model or a blueprint, if you like, of, of the optimal performance. Imagery and self-talk are part of that, and we'll get onto those in a moment. Feedback is clearly important as well. Positive feedback from the athlete's coaches. Imagery is a mental rehearsal, and it's a strategy that many athletes use. And here's the, the kinds of things that a, uh, an athlete or a coach will go through when they're rehearsing a performance. It's almost like a, a video of their performance. They will also use prompts, but they will also visualize any contingencies that arise. I, I wanted to show you um, what makes this young man different. What makes his intangibles different from a um, Devontae Graham? What makes him fearless when he goes to the floor to play? LeVar Ball. As you watch the Ball family, you can see that he demonstrated all these techniques for LaMelo. Will LaMelo say it's just basketball? That is powerful. He's saying something from a mindset that most people don't get. They think he's just, oh, it's just, no, he's telling you it's just basketball. I'm not going to put more on it than it is because I control it by my dominance, whereby it's just basketball. So what, I, what I've learned in, in, in watching these different videos and my understanding, I'm starting to see why that there's nothing that bothers him. And what really got me as the gentleman was talking, I was watching LaMelo on the sideline during the game with him being out. He was, he was just... He, he was agitated. He wanted to get into the game. He wanted to play. You, you have to understand when someone is encompassed in something that they've, that they've done, and that's them, they can't help it. Like so I heard someone say he was trying to cut his cast off. Why? Because he is a, an elitist in what he does. And this is what they couldn't understand. This is why they said we threw everything at him and he exceeded our expectation. Man. So, so, so what am I saying? The team will struggle without the general. They will struggle without the leader. They would struggle without the one whose mind is right. Now I understand in Australia, I don't know about the NBA, but I understand in Australia when he always had his headphones on. It was not that he was shutting his teammates out. He was in preparation mentally for what he saw, the passes that he saw that he before he made them. Oh, man, this guy is amazing. I just want to say thank you for being on with Big J. If you like our content, subscribe to the channel. If you would be so nice to leave us a comment um, and give us a thumbs up, we do appreciate it. Have an amazing day. Man, I hope this opened some insight and gave you something else to understand the mind of an elite athlete. Have a great day.